Here is how I feel about Instagram. Instagram is basically the perfect gateway to creating positive touch points. Now, what are touch points? Touch points are interactions that your customers have with your brand. The better and the more positive touch points that people have, the more likely they're gonna buy from you. The more likely they're gonna turn it into loyal fans. For example, with Starbucks, when you see someone holding a cup of Starbucks with a smiley face, then this gives a great touch point. Another example would be when you hear about that new flavor from your friend tagging this new pumpkin spice latte. That's another great touch point. Or if you see a new campaign that Starbucks is doing, which is very creative, that's another great touch point. And all of these touch points, they add to the willingness of you taking out your dollars to spend with Starbucks. Just to prove my point, research from Google says that Specifically in the food business, you need roughly 20 positive good touch points in order for you to actually decide to purchase from that brand. Well, now you might be thinking, you know what, Wilson, you're raving about touch points, but what does this have to do with Instagram? Well, first of all, they are one of the biggest platforms out there. They have more than a billion active users, and not only that, more than 500 million people are actively using their stories features every single day. This is a perfect platform for you to build positive touch points with your audience. So what do I mean by that? If you're advertising on TV, well, you only get 20 seconds for you to establish that one touch point with the brand. And let's say if you know what, you don't have the budget for TV, you're doing email marketing. Well, every single touch point is one email. So it really depends on how many emails you send to your audience. But on Instagram, you can actually create multiple positive touch points every single day. I'll give you an example. Let's say if you own this coffee shop and you're making cookies, you can share behind the scenes with your audience of you making the cookies. This gives value because people don't get to see this every day and that's a positive touch point. Now they are on your profile. They see other people engaging with your cafe, with your cookies. They love it because they get to see that confidence, people enjoy your cookies, positive touch point again. Now you're doing a live Q&A on your Instagram. What's gonna happen is that you answer a lot of questions, you have a lot of transparency, another positive touch point interaction with your audience. This is just a quick example sharing with you how you can actually create positive touch points. There are many other ways, for example, if you're having interactions with influencers, them doing collaborations, giveaways, many more different touch points that you can create using Instagram. Now, within a day, you generated four to six different positive touch points, and this is how you're able to convert these window shoppers into customers and into loyal fans just by you knowing what to post on your Instagram. And finally, guys, this can all be done using organic growth hacks. What do I mean by that? That means you don't need to spend any money on Instagram ads. We're talking about you saving thousands of dollars. You still can have tens of thousands of people to follow you, to like you, to share your stuff. All of this on your Instagram account. So all you have to do is to actually have the right strategies and also have the patience to do it and the consistency to actually do it on a regular basis. Mix all this up with your regular posts with your reels, with your stories, with your IGTV, with your carousels together in order for you to create this organic growth. Be super strategical with your user-generated content. This way, you're gonna have a lot more people to talk stuff about you because at the end of the day, what other people have to say about your brand is much more powerful than what you say about your own brand. This could very well mean inviting influencers to come to try out your food or to be able to collaborate with different businesses that correspond and actually complement your brand. This could also mean creating a branded hashtag so then that way you can share it with people who support you so then that way other people can see the same thing. And when you're able to use user-generated content properly and strategically and masterfully, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have a lot of free content for you. Not only that, these free content, you're gonna be able to repurpose it to actually drive sales for your food business. 92% of consumers, they turn to people that they know for referrals before they turn to any other type of sources. 
Millennials, they trust UGC, user-generated content, more than 50% more than what you as a brand have to say about your own stuff. A staggering 93% of consumers feel that UGC is really helpful when deciding where to eat. So guys, when you're creating your goals, you must identify your whole customer journey and create the positive touch points so then that way you can get lots of customers. I know I just went on a tangent on influencer and UGC and the reason why I did that is because I just want to emphasize the importance of these two elements because this would really make or break your business. We see these strategies utilized in world-class companies. Case in point, McDonald's, they just did their collaboration with Travis Scott and also with BTS. So influencer marketing works like a charm and that's the reason why I'm sharing that with you. Now I know a lot of people when it comes to influencer marketing has a lot of questions and it is very intimidating at the same time. Because at the end of the day, how do you reach out? Who do you reach out to? How do you identify them? What do you even say when you're reaching out? What if they reply? What type of deals are you gonna be able to set with them? And guys, I've worked with hundreds of food influencers and you know what? Part of my success is all thanks to them. And because so many people ask me and I do a lot of consultation, I basically took what I have done in my own business. Every time I work with these food influencers, I jot down what I say. I jot down what works, what doesn't work, and I put it in the Foodiepreneur's Finest program. Now, all these templates that I'm sharing with you are proven to work. Every time we open at a new location, a new city, a new country, we utilize the same core messaging, the same core templates. Now, it is all available for you in Foodiepreneur's Finest. And if you have any questions in drafting your first influencer campaign, feel free to drop into our student-only community. And on top of that, we also have our bi-weekly coaching call, so then that way we can guide you through this whole process. So if you're still confused, you don't know the steps to take to leverage Instagram, to create your first influencer campaign, to create user-generated content, to create positive touch points, so then that way you can exist in your customer's eyes, so then that way you can actually start making sales, then you have to check out Foodiepreneur's Finest Program because we cover everything in there specifically for you. So there you go, friends. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about how do you build a thriving small business and leverage Instagram as a tool to actually make it, then definitely check it out in the link below, Foodiepreneur's Finest Program. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have, make sure you guys smash that like button. Otherwise, I will see you guys in next week's video.